Ahoy there, me hearties. This be Captain Silver Hook, and you're listening to the Two Old Pirates podcast. Set sail for an open sea of stories, tales, and some really crazy stuff. I expect you to like and subscribe, lest you be walking the plank. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Two Old Pirates podcast, episode 104. Uh, this one is uh, an interesting one. It'll be short and sweet, and I hope that you really enjoy it. We're going to be coming up on the beginning of season six at the end of this month, so uh, I hope that you'll watch this, uh, share it, and if you've not subscribed, please subscribe. This is a true story of uh, one of my teaching years and what happened with some students. If you look at the picture that goes along with this episode, you'll kind of get an idea of what was going on. Um, it was the 1990s. I was still a very young teacher and I worked at a school district. I'm not going to name any school districts or anything like that because I, I want to protect everyone. But to make a long story short, I was teaching at a school district and they had open campus for lunch, which means the students could come or go. And uh, so that was still kind of normal for some school districts in the 90s. But I was told as we got into the spring session that during spring break, don't expect too many of the seniors to come back after after lunch during spring break because there's so many kids down at the beach and stuff that they come to school and then they'll be there for a little bit and make it to the beach. So um, that first couple days of spring break, sure enough, um, my senior classes never showed back up. <laughs> maybe a couple of the kids so it was a pretty easy week but one of the classes that i was teaching was an advanced class in world geography so they were freshmen and since they were so young they all always showed back up but on one particular day as we showed back up you know i was going through my different classes having one or two seniors here and there and then this class came in and all these freshmen kind of filed into my room and they were taking their seats and we're about to do current events how i always do current events and stuff and and as I'm teaching about whatever I was teaching that day, I happened to look, and in the back of the room, uh, sitting near the back, one of the couple last one of the, one of the couple last rows, there was a young lady. And while everybody else has their paper and their pen going to town writing, uh, I see her just staring into the distance, like she can see something else. And I'm wondering what's going on. But you know, I'm not going to pick on her. I'm not going to say, "Hey, what's going on? Let's go." Uh, so I, I raised my voice a little bit like, so anyways, what we're going to look at here is in this river valley or whatever I was doing. Uh, and I noticed she's just still like looking around. Well, a couple of the kids kind of like turn and they look at her and they can see that she's here, but she's not here. If you know what I'm talking about. So I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should talk to a nurse or if I should get an assistant principal. She's always been a good kid. Straight A's. I mean, honors kid. And then I see her start reaching for things that aren't there. And as she begins to reach more and more, and she's staring straight ahead, she starts smiling, this crazy kind of smile. And I'm like, okay, time out. This is a little bit too much. The kids start looking around. They start noticing things. So I did not have an ability to go ahead and call down to a resource officer or the nurse. So I said, hey, kids, keep taking your notes. Chill out. And uh, I'll be right back. So I step out, I see another teacher, I say, get the nurse now. And so I, I step back in to make sure that the student's okay. I'm waiting on the nurse. And I start to go up by her desk. And she's still just smiling and grabbing at things. And the kids have all stopped working now. Because they're like, and they're not saying anything. They're just zoned in on where she is because she's not on earth. And so, you know, I'm worried for, you know, I was not a parent at the time, but I was like, man, what about this is my kid? Is she having a mental breakdown or something? And I finally, as I'm standing next to her, I was all like, are, are you okay? And without blinking or looking at me, she just keeps staring straight ahead, smiling, trying to grab things. She's all, they're beautiful, Mr. DeWolf. They're so beautiful. And I was like, what's so beautiful? And she's all, the butterflies, don't you see them? They're everywhere. And I'm all like, you see butterflies? She's all like, don't you see them? They're all different colors, and they're smiling at me, and they're so happy. Well, some of the kids, they're freshmen. They can't help it. They're kind of giggling a little bit. I'm all like, Ch -ch -ch. like, don't make fun of somebody and stuff, because 
I didn't know what ride she was on. I didn't know what was going on here and stuff. And she just keeps, I was like, but why do you keep grabbing? She's like, because I've got a big bag. And I'm collecting all these butterflies to keep forever. Because they're smiling at me and I'm smiling at them. We're friends. And I was like, okay, this, this is something out of my league. Uh, so the nurse finally does show up. And after she shows up, she's like looking at her. She's all, what is she doing, Mr. Wolf? I said, she's catching butterflies. She's catching imaginary butterflies that are smiling back at her. And she's all, oh my. So uh, the nurse goes over to try to talk to her. And she's all, wait, wait, I haven't caught them all. They're still here. There's so many that are my friends. And the nurse is all like, well, we'll catch them downstairs. And as she stands up, she's all like, come on, come on. So she's still grabbing as she's walking through the aisle. And the kids, some of them are smirking. Some of them are kind of giggling. Some are staring into like, what is hope? Because don't forget, these have all been kids all through elementary and junior high. They're best friends. And they're all straight A students. They've never done anything like this. And so uh, they're kind of worried about her, some of her. So the nurse finally gets her out of the room, and I can't get the class to come back together. I'm all like, look, guys, I don't know what that was. Evidently, she was seeing um, she was seeing butterflies everywhere, but we're not seeing butterflies, so let's get back to work. And that was almost impossible. So we spent the rest of the, the period just like uh, just talking about the weather and stuff like that. I, I kept on redirecting us away from her. Um, I found out that she spent at least a day or two in the hospital. What had happened was... That day, trying to be a little bit older than what she was, as she walked out of school to go ahead and go to lunch, a couple upperclassmen said, hey, we're going to drive down to the beach. Why don't you go with us for a little while? And she thought, wow, I'll impress these older upperclassmen. I've never done anything. I've never drank or done anything. What could possibly happen? And evidently, the story that I got later on, after she came back and she was very apologetic and she was very sorry and she swore she'd never do anything like that again, was that she went down. The last thing that she remembered is that she had gone down the beach with them. She kind of got separated in broad daylight walking up and down the beach and that this very, very handsome young man came up to her from college and was like, I guess, talking to her, flirting and stuff. And then he's all like, well, hey, you know, if you need anything, uh, blah, blah, blah. And he gave her something. And she didn't want to say no to him because she thought he was very handsome. And so she took it, popped it in her mouth and swallowed it. And of course, what she had taken was a hit of acid. So uh, that is my story about the time in class when I was a very young teacher that I had a student who had dropped acid, who had never tasted alcohol or smoked a cigarette, anything like that. And she went straight, boom, into acid. And uh, she felt very bad about it. Her parents were very embarrassed and stuff. She was a young kid, and I believe she learned her lesson. But to sit there and see somebody imaginarily trying to catch thousands and thousands of butterflies that don't exist, I thought that for a short, short, short podcast episode, you might enjoy one of my many, many stories with kids over the years of teaching, almost 30 years. This is the acid-dropping freshman kid who decided to walk on the wild side for a college boy. Remember, she took the acid, but she didn't stay there for him. She went ahead and went back with one of the upperclassmen back to school because she didn't want to be tardy. So she was a straight A, straight you know, nose kid, besides taking the acid down on the beach and then coming straight back to school and tripping in my class which it had taken effect by the time she was in my class so thousands of butterflies all smiling at her she had thousands of friends that day all surrounding and she had to take them home so if you like this uh and you want to hear any more crazy stories over almost a 30-year period of teaching i can add those in i know that your favorites are usually the true crime but i do like to mix it up some because i want to be uh more eclectic with the uh stuff that I provide on here, the different topics that I provide. So, you know, if you like the true crime, I love that. If you like this, I love it too. So hopefully you guys will go ahead and like, share, and please subscribe. Only about 20% of our viewers actually are subscribers. If you're listening to this, just subscribe. Just hit subscribe. Please subscribe. Come on, you can subscribe. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this. Peace, and I'll see you with the next one.